tree at the head end. This is very, very interesting. The plant, in other words, the distribution of the last mile, long distance hauls, things of nature. And then they have a number of products for the customer premise. Let's take a look. I'm going to slide down to the one that, uh, that I have in my house, which is the Touchtone Telephone Gateway. And this is providing me internet access. It also is based on the DOCSIS 2.0. And it provides a two, two full lines of carrier grade voice over IP. So I am actually using that in my house. So I'm using this as an interface box, provides me internet services, cable modem, and voice over IP. So this is one way that cable modem providers can bring this right to your house. Just a side note, the DOCSIS 2.0 is an older standard for the cable company. Remember, this is the standard that provides all of your RF to IP technology. So right now cable companies that are running DOCSIS 3.0 are really on top of the latest greatest standards for RF to for IP IP over RF, voice over IP, all all the technologies that broadband providers are providing through cable. So DOCSIS 3 is the better one. Now, to set up quality of service on the RV082, they basically have two methodologies. One is called rate control, and one is priority. Priority is kind of a general, simplified version. Uh, basically, if you choose priority, you set up the ports, either TCP, UDP, and the port numbers, upstream, downstream, and then you basically say high or low. So, it's that's it. You really don't have any more control over than, yes, I... I want this as a high priority or no, I want this as low. So that's really the only difference between priority and rate control. We're going to go ahead and do rate control since it's a little bit more involved. So we're going to begin by choosing both interfaces because we have a dual WAN connection. When we pull down the existing, in other words, they've pre-set up services that you can QoS. But our particular ones are not here. Now notice they have LTP which is really good for VPN. And so they've got some things, a point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, again, for VPN, all, an IPsec for VPN. But we need some special protocol set up. So we're going to go ahead and create our own. And we're going to first start, start with SIP. And we're going to make that. And again, you would have to get your manual out for the voice over IP implementation that this business. Sometimes SIP uses both TCP and UDP. I'm going to go ahead and choose UDP, and we're going to establish the port numbers. So I've typed in the port numbers for SIP, which is really the, it's a lower bandwidth, and basically it sets up the call, tear down the call, does a lot of the control management of the phone conversation. I'm going to add it to the list. And don't forget, we're going to add this to the list, and we're going to come down and say OK. So now that should be added to our list. So let's pull it down now, and we're going to be looking for SIP down here at the bottom. And now we're going to set up upstream, downstream. Keep in mind, this is not a high bandwidth QoS setting, so we're not so much concerned as we are when we get into RTP. We have to think a little bit about our ISP. My ISP allows me 2 megs up and 30 megs down. So I ha as I set up my rates, I have to think about what I want to do. Now notice with SIP, we're going to set up upstream. But when we do RTP, we're going to have to do one for upstream and one for downstream because audio travels both ways in that conversation. So think about those things as you're doing this. Now, BrightHouse only allows me 2 megabits upstream, so I'm going to QoS SIP upstream at a minimum of 1 meg and a maximum of 1.5 megs. I'm going to enable that, add that to our list. So when I add to the list, notice it says input IP range. And what it's asking me here is what internal host inside my LAN need to be a part of this QoS. So I'm going to go... 172 up to 200. So any of my business clients dot 16 dot 0 dot 150. Any of those IP, that IP range will be impacted by this QoS setting. So I'm going to add to list. 
And notice it's put in there. And don't forget, you got to come down and save. So now I've set up an upstream. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with a downstream. So I'm going to go down here and add SIP. And I'm going to, this time it's going to be downstream because the SIP goes both ways. And we're going to set up about the same thing. We're going to do one meg. Remember, this is not a high bandwidth. Our RTP will be high bandwidth, and we'll have to do a little bit more finagling there. We're going to enable for a range of 170 to 170 uh, 150. And that should take care of it. we got to choose WANs, so we're going to choose both WANs. And we're going to add this to the list. And so now we have an upstream, downstream QoS for that protocol range. We're going to save. Now that's set up our SIP. Now we do RDP. So we're going to go back to service management. And we're going to add a new service. And this is going to be, we'll just call this RTP. And I'm also going to include S, secure RTP, depending on which one. Now this is no doubt about this one. This is going to be UDP. And the port range is going to be so our port range is going to be from 16384 to 32767 and we're going to add that to the list and we're going to also come down here and say okay you got to do a lot of these okays and saves or you're going to now we're going to go ahead and set up RDP we're going to do it on both now remember our upstream is only 2 megs so that's that's as much as we can we can grab going up downstream different story but so we're going to uh, pull this down and grab the new RTP and we've already got uh, let's go ahead and set up one seven so it didn't like me setting it at two megs so I'm gonna have to drop it down a little bit so I'm gonna play with it a little bit here and I've went, changed it to uh, minimum 1.5 megabits per second and 1.7 we're gonna try it again with a one meg minimum and 1.5 and I think I hit, it bought that one. Okay, so we've got upstream. It didn't like me getting too close to the max. So I'm going to come down here and save. Now all we did was up, upstream. So now we've got to do downstream. Same thing. So WAN 1, WAN 2, pull down to our RTP. This is carrying the heavy load. Dot .150, if I type that in correct. Now we're going to do up downstream. We've got plenty of room here. So we can give this easy 20, 10 megs and 10 megs. And enable that. And let's see if it'll buy it. And it did. So we're giving it a QoS downstream of 10 megs, which is probably more than enough. And we'll save. And so now we've set up our QoS. So let's go view our results and notice it pulls up a little web page here we can take a look so here we can see all of our upstream downstream our SIP configurations our RTP SRTP and so you can kind of see it all there and you can go back and configure and edit it so this is a way to take a look at your QoS that you've set up we did talk about Skype one of the problems with Skype is it uses random port numbers and it's such a wide field of random port numbers that for most folks they just try to get enough bandwidth to their router in other words if you're having a problem with Skype you probably need to get a higher ISP WAN connection and that probably will take care of your problem but QoS is very difficult with Skype because it's proprietary and it covers such a random variety of port numbers that is hard to nail down there's no standard so we've done all this work now we better start doing something smart like backing up all the work that we have done on this router especially for this business owner should something happen to the router and we need to get this configuration that we've done all this work on back into the router quickly we can do it so I'm going to when the router runs when you stop the router and boot it up for the first time it goes into its non-volatile memory and there is a special file with a specific name and most of it will start up it will actually have its name as startup 
and it will pull that file and that's what the router uses to start the router up in other words what configuration do you want me to boot the router in and that will be this file that is stored in non-volatile RAM right in the router you can make a copy of that that startup file in another location in non-volatile memory and that's called the mirror so if you'll notice down here after you've made changes you may want to copy your startup file to the mirror file in other words two files with exactly the same contents as long as you do this step so in this case my startup file is my I'm going to copy it to the mirror and it puts a second copy of my startup file in non-volatile memory if for some reason my startup file gets corrupted I can always go down here and say look take my backup file and make up this make it the startup file so this is very similar to Cisco routers but just be aware this is this is very important make sure you have at least copied your startup to a mirror location in other words you've got a second copy of the file and then it would be very wise to go ahead and back up both of these so I'm going to do that I'm going to hit back up and watch Google Chrome notice down here you can see it it has downloaded the file and I'm also going to back up the mirror configuration and so it downloads the second one and if I show those downloads you can see that it has downloaded those files so here is the folder that actually downloaded and saved copies of the startup configuration and the mirrored configuration so if we for some reason needed to restore from some spare files we could do that notice they are CONFIG files that's extension and we could pull up a mirror and a startup file so we could restore the router if we needed to but be sure and understand this section the backup downloads these two files down somewhere on your ex on your laptop or somewhere where you can store the files burn them to CD-ROM put the business owners name on them so you can restore but this is just as important and this is going to take your startup file and copy it to a non-volatile RAM within the router the, this is saved on the router itself so this gives you a quick way to restore the router the startup file and this gives you a more a permanent way and you can always go to the restore button go find the file from your laptop or CD-ROM wherever you permanently put it and restore the router to its original configuration don't ever forget to do this another important area is to go to the firmware upgrade and you click on this firmware download from website and it takes you right to Cisco site and you can quickly get to the latest greatest information on the RV082 and it doesn't matter which router you have it takes you right there so this allows you to get quickly to the places you need to be and you can see I'm right there I'm just clicking through Cisco's web pages and a lot of the configuration firmware updates things of that nature very nice quick access to that information if you have a management system that uses SNMP that you're managing and you're collecting uh, metrics and data from your router to some type of software that will collect SNMP you can enable that you can put in this information save it and then that management system can go pull this metrics and information out of your router companies like what's up gold have a variety of, of SNMP monitoring technology software discovery tools this allows you to use this basic standard to collect information from network gears switches routers firewalls access points things of that nature and pull that information into a monitoring console so this is the kind of software that you have to have in order to use it just be aware